بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay, so let's try to understand what is SD WAN. So before we get into the actual uh, in detail of the SD WAN course, so we need to understand uh, what is SD WAN. So in simple words, SD WAN stands for Software Defined uh, WAN. WAN. WAN is nothing but your wide area network. Now this SD WAN is a part of the SDN architecture. So if you if you remember in the foundations, we have seen there are different types of network automations we can do. we can automate your lan where you can automatically configure your devices and we can configure the switches to do the forwarding from a centralized controller we call this as sd access now similar way we can also automate your wan sites that is so software defined a wan here so in terms of uh, sdn architecture it is a part of sdn architecture where we are trying to automate your wan networks so what is sd wan it's a software approach for managing your wide area networks based on the software defined approach uh, which is going to offer plenty of advantages like centralized management we we manage everything from a centralized controller uh, and makes your job easier reduces the cost and also improves the connectivity of your branch offices but before we get into the sd wan now we need to understand what are the problems with your previous traditional uh, wan okay so because when we talk about sd wan it is more the kind more or less the same kind of wan we use we still use mpls we still use a broadband we still use 4g networks but the only difference is we are trying to redefine this with automation concepts and why we are doing that because the traditional wan which are being used they have some disadvantages so let's try to understand the traditional wan disadvantages so then we'll we'll understand what are the advantages we get with the sd wan and how it is going to be more uh, better option compared to the traditional wan like uh, one of the simple thing like Uh, if you talk about traditional wan we do have some branch offices so let's say these are my branch offices now we are going to connect these branch offices to your head office and to your data center we generally connect them right so depending upon how many connections you have now we do connect these sites we either use mpls we have other options like i can also use internet even i can use 4g uh, as a backup links so generally when you are connecting these things most of the time uh, the most popular technology we use is mpls mpls or we, we mpls again provide some kind of high speed data transfer rates generally provided by the service providers and again we do have some of your uh, users sitting here in the branch offices uh, they are trying to access some kind of applications let's say so they'll be accessing the application and the resources from the head office where all your centralized uh, centralized database where you have all your application hosted or maybe in the data center and you are trying to access everything from the branch office now while this happens uh, the router because whenever the user sitting here is trying to access the application the request goes to the router and the router is going to check the routing table and route the packet uh, because if you have multiple routes what it is going to do it's going to calculate if you are running ospf it's going to calculate the cost and whichever the route is having the shortest path it is going to use that particular path and it is going to forward the packet that is a traditional routing it works and let's say due to some reason if this link fails then ospf says you can go from alternate route so we also have redundancy where it will use the second possible route to forward the packet but the problem is uh, most of the applications we run now what if this particular route is having is actually congested so if there is too much of traffic going on this link if this link is down so if the link is congested it's not going to use the second link now how the routing protocol works generally we we know routing how it works let's say if there are three paths it is going to decide any one route as a best route and it is going to forward the traffic on that particular route 
and whereas the second and the third roots are not being used, they are not used unless and until the primary root fails. So if the primary root fails, then only the second link will be used, which means this link is overutilized because all the most of the traffic may go from this route, which means from specific branch office to this uh, data center or the head office, this link is utilized, whereas other links are only utilized if the primary fails. So it's like almost they are not utilized if, if the primary link is always running or up and running. Now the problem is when you are running some applications, if that applications do not get enough bandwidth, like a simple example, let's say I'm running some VoIP application and that VoIP application requires two Mbps of bandwidth. And if this link is not having that much of bandwidth, there is a possibility that the packets may get dropped. And again, there is a quality of service you can add that, are, that is another thing. But in today's network, most of the applications what we use, like, like if you take an example of uh, something like Salesforce, or if you if you talk about Dropbox, where you host some files, or even if you take a Gmail, uh, and all these applications, they they are cloud based. So generally, these applications are like software as a service based applications, and these applications they reside in the uh, they reside in your data center. And and prob probably they they are they should be accessible from anywhere on the internet, because when you are trying to use these applications now these applications they don't use the traditional MPLS network they use internet to access that. So the problem is most of these applications may get impacted because of the traditional WAN architecture. Now, in the case of SD WAN, so all the applications, whatever we are running, like in today's network, most of the applications, what we use, they go over the internet, not over the traditional network, because these applications are hosted in the cloud and they will be using internet, which means the branch offices from my branch office, we will be accessing these applications directly from the internet, not from the data center. Now, because of this, now the problem is, it is going to add delay. Now, one of the issue with the traditional van is it is going to add delay, which means uh, your normal traffic will use this primary route. Maybe it uses MPLS for connecting to headquarters or the data center. And if you are accessing any kind of cloud-based applications, it may use internet. So, or you, you may have an alternate path actually. So one of the issue with the traditional van is it's going to add delay because the application which is going to request from the data center, uh, probably uh, it's, it's going to add delay. So, so what we can do is uh, we can avoid this by ensuring that we our branch offices are directly connecting to internet without needing to go to the head office. Because most of the time what we do is we connect the head office, all the branch offices, and we say that every, even if you want to go to internet, you actually go from the head office uh, because that's going to add more load on this MPLS link or whatever the WAN link you are using. So instead of this, what we are saying is we are saying, okay, now the branch office can go to internet directly to access all your cloud-based applications without going to the head office, right? So that is something we, we generally want to do. So, Again, with traditional van, you it, it's going to increase the cost, okay? Because uh, because the additional cost will be added when you are adding the additional MPLS links between the data center and the branch offices, and even if the applications are using uh, this link through head office, then that's going to increase the cost because it's going to increase the maintenance of the network equipments, okay? And also the redundancy issues will be there. Because if you want to provide some kind of redundancy, again, that is going to make much complex to uh, deploy. And also it will impact the uh, business productivity because uh, if there is a delay in the, if there is a delay in accessing the applications, then it will also impact the company's productivity. So 
traditional vans have some issues like i said so what we are trying to do here is with the sd van we are going to overcome these problems like here one of the disadvantage uh, the failover like let's say if you if you have two links a primary link is always being utilized and if the primary link fails it will start using the second link right uh, but again that depends upon the convergence that depends upon the convergence of your ospf or ehrp protocol uh, but until that time probably that will the, the the link will be down right so so what we'll be doing is with the sd van we are going to automatically fail over uh, between them so which means with sd van what we are trying to do is let's say this branch office is uh, specifically accessing some applications or uh, it's trying to send the database se send uh, the over the links so what i can do is i can do some kind of load sharing between these two i can say that okay some uh, some applications which are specific to the internet can go from here also it can go from mpls or even i can use a 4g network which can be connected and these links can be, uh, it, we can actually divide the traffic between the links. So we can dynamically shift the links. It's not manual, it's a kind of dynamic, uh, dynamically shifting the links. So where we can do more efficient utilization of the links by combining all the links and providing the maximum, uh, maximum capacity to deliver the traffic. So with SD-WAN, it's no more the routing protocol will decide. Normally, in a traditional van, who will decide which path it is going to use? OSPF will decide the routing protocol. But whereas here, when we when we configure some SDN controllers, so based on the application requirement, it is going to decide whether the traffic should go over the MPLS. And it's going to check whether that particular bandwidth is available on that link. If not, it will try to send over the other link. Or if possible, you, it, will, it will try to do a kind of a sharing, load sharing between the two links, dynamically based on the application requirement. Now the routing of the packets, it's no more than based on the shortest path. How the routing protocol will do? The routing protocol will decide the forwarding path based on the shortest path, based on the IGP unless you implement some policy based routing to decide which path they should use but now the controller will decide which path the particular packet should flow based on the requirement of that particular applications what we are running in your network so this way we can automatically fail over uh, over the other links and again as i said uh, mostly some of the advantages are the same like configuration is distributed here uh, whenever you add any new site, you need to go and configure that particular site manually. And whenever you want to add any policies, any configurations, any changes, everything you have to log into the command line and do it manually. But whereas with SD-WAN, we are not going to do that. With SD-WAN, I do have a controller here and the controller will push the configurations. So this device comes and connects to the controller and the controller is going to push the configurations and i can i can do something called zero touch deployment now the zero touch provisioning nothing but it's an automated uh, provisioning of your devices you simply connect a router to the network or even if you connect to the internet any broadband network so it's going to it's pre-configured to contact this controller and get the configs and dynamically the router the sites will come up without doing the manual configurations. So which means if I, if I want to add hundreds of sites, I don't need to go to each and every site. Of course, you, you need to have that physical device connected to the internet, but I don't need to go to each and every device to do the changes. I can push all the configurations to these hundreds of sites from a single centralized place without touching that particular device. So, this is what we call as auto provision of your uh, WAN edge devices. But if you are doing this with a traditional WAN, it's going to take a significant amount of time because you have to go to each and every site and do the manual configurations. 
So finally, uh, if you quickly summarize, what is SD van? SD van is a replacement for your traditional van, a lightweight replacement for your traditional van. Uh, what this exactly means is we are not going to replace the MPLS. MPLS networks will be there. Still, we use MPLS to connect the sites. Still, we use a broadband to connect the sites. Still, we use 4G. But the only difference is we are going to manage the devices from a centralized controller. OK, so most of the time you might think, OK, it's going to replace MPLS. It's not like that. So MPLS still provide you the connectivity through service border. But the only difference is we are going to do the software defined uh, automation kind of thing for WAN. So we can say like WAN automation. Also, it will provide you the load sharing between the sites. Like I said, when you when you're accessing specific applications, so it may do load sharing between these multiple sites. Uh, that is possible based on the application requirement. And also it is going to simplify the management of your sites from a centralized place. We are going to do everything like management, configuration and orchestration, everything of your WAN devices will be doing from a centralized controller place. So we'll be having a centralized uh, controller, the SDN controller probably from where we'll be managing. So that's actually that is what we these are the controller devices these are all the devices comes under controllers <clears throat> so we'll be talking about these things individual devices what they do so improves the network security because by default there is an inbuilt encryption which is going to ensure that your van traffic whether it is going over the internet or over the mpls it is encrypted and also it is going to uh, integrate your other services as well like firewall van optimization 